this time on Dragon Ball Super. So in episode 128 of Dragon Ball Super, we have three rounds of Jiren versus Goku, Vegeta, and 17 with an intermission. And surprisingly enough, Jiren wins all of them. However, he's not the star of this episode, and I think it is obvious who is. Speaking of 17, there are four things that stood out to me that really put him above the rest of his team in terms of how valuable he is as a team member. And we'll get to those throughout this video, but starting round one of the fight is Jiren powering up and Vegeta, which I was very happy with, mentions, dude, it was a mistake to wait till now to do this. If you did that from the start, this tournament probably would be over by now. But this fight, guys, is freaking awesome. You got 17 Goku and Vegeta at the same time just trying to get to Jiren. Now, there are three moments that stood out to me in round one of this fight. And number one was the cross beam between Vegeta and 17. Like, some of the cinematography in this, the wide angles that they show, awesome stuff. But we get to number one of 17's moments in this episode that makes him the best team member. Jiren is about to kick the crap out of Vegeta, but 17 bashes him out of the way and takes the brunt of the attack for Vegeta. Wow, even though he knew that this guy is way more powerful than him and the attack would damage him other than Vegeta. Way to take one for the team. But while the fight continues, Jiren keeps kicking them away, and I'm thinking, wow, these guys are really lucky that there's always a boulder in front of them that they can land on instead of, you know, falling and getting eliminated. I thought that was kind of funny, even though there's a lot of boulders around there, so. So number two of the highlights of this fight, Jiren compliments Vegeta on his punch. Like, even though Vegeta was completely out of energy in that last episode, it's okay, he just got more. And actually had a punch that impresses Jiren. So that was a pretty cool little line. And number three of round one of cool ass moments. Jiren's Shoruken against Goku and his little Kamehameha. Now if this episode does one thing is show off 17 and how awesome he is. Secondary to that is showing off Jiren again and how awesome he is again. And he is just taking on all three of these guys and just uppercuts the crap out of this Kamehameha. That was so freaking awesome, man. But we come to the end of round one. And number two of 17's great moments. 17's sneak attack against Jiren. I guess you can call it a sneak attack because he kind of said, hey, I'm here about to attack you, and now I'm attacking you. <laughs> it it kind of would have had a little more impact, I think, if he actually just attacked him instead of patting him on the shoulder, and then, hey, I'm gonna attack you now. So that was kind of funny, and they're like, oh, Jiren is wounded, oh no! And I'm like, wow, 17, like, is he really that powerful to be able to you know, wound a powered up Jiren who was literally blocking Super Saiyan God Goku with a finger and flinging Kaioken times 20 Goku around like a little ragdoll. Now 17 is wounding him, so that's kind of interesting. But now they know the strategy and Jiren's weakness. Catch him off guard and we can hurt him. Uh, really? Like... I didn't know people could get hurt when they're off guard since, you know, that's something that they really beat in your head earlier on in the tournament. So that was kind of funny. But it leads to a strategy and the beginning of round two. So they create a strategy for Goku and Vegeta to distract Raditz while 17 looks for an opening to attack while Jiren's off guard. Or at least surprise him, like surprise him with the attack. That's, that's the whole thing here is that he gets a surprised by the attack. But unfortunately, it fails because Jiren blocks the attack and then we get one of the coolest shots and moments in this whole episode, I thought. Uh, Jiren is rushing at 17 and 17 puts up multiple barriers and we get this awesome wide shot of the barriers just shattering under Jiren's power. Um, that was awesome, like major highlights round two. Another highlight of round two, everyone blasting him at the same time and he's just like taking it all and it's not even hurting him and he just yells them all away. And you know, Vegeta and Goku are done at this point. They are wiped out. 
Like, Vegeta's energy was already all the way gone, and he just got more energy for this episode. And, like, Goku's been go doing Kaioken this whole time, so he's gotta be wiped out by now. So these guys practically have nothing left. Which leads to the intermission of Frieza. 17, Goku, and Vegeta are all down. Lucky for them, a pissed off Frieza is there to save the day. Now, I found it very interesting how final form Frieza was kind of pushing Jiren back here. Like, did Jiren really need to even move at all? Early in the tournament, base Goku was doing literally nothing while hitting Jiren. You know, and now we have final form Frieza and he's dodging him. Why does he feel, he's powered up at this point even so I feel like there was no need for him to even move so that was just a little bit weird to me like Frieza's so pissed off he's like forget the rules I'm just gonna kill you and I'm like really dude you you, you even said yourself that this guy's way too much for you but I guess you're just too mad to be logical right now it, but Jiren stops him with a freaking stare <laughs> you gotta love Jiren's stare and then Frieza gets knocked out for the 93rd time in the last three episodes. But now we get to round three, the meat of the episode. 17 versus Jiren. With 17 blasting Jiren in the back. It seems like he took him off guard. Why didn't he do a bigger blast? I feel like if he could wound him before by taking him by surprise, why didn't he do a bigger blast to take him by surprise this time? That was very strange. And then Belmont's like, what are you gonna do about a 17? What is... What are you fighting for? 17, sunglasses on, I want a boat. But finally, this triggers some backstory for Jiren. 17, it triggers the question in 17, what is it that you're fighting for, Jiren? What is your wish? What do you want out of all this? And Belmont's like, uh, you know, Jiren's character has been pretty boring and lackluster so far. I guess I'll dump his entire backstory right now and spend like five minutes explaining it. All in one ghost, just so that we can get it over with. They're fans of Dragon Ball Super. There, you have backstory, you're happy now. And this kind of made me feel that the writers of Dragon Ball Super played a lot of Mass Effect. Because I feel like, you know, if you've played Mass Effect, you have the option to create the backstory for your character. There's the tragic backstory, the hero backstory. Uh, I can't remember what the other one was. But uh, the tragic one, it so reminded me of this. And that's the one they went with, the tragic backstory. Which also reminded me of Luke Skywalker. So it's a pretty popular backstory. Popular, I guess you could say, somewhat cookie cutter backstory. But you know, to be honest, I'm a sucker for the tragic backstory of the hero rising above his, you know, trials and tribulations of his family getting killed and then he gets friends, but then the evil comes back and kills his friends, and then his friends leave him, so he loses his trust, and over time develops this thought process that strength is all that matters in the world, you know? Nothing else matters, friendship doesn't matter, love doesn't matter, it's strength. Everything revolves around strength. Which actually kind of ties into Topo and Vegeta's thing, of Topo dropping everything he cared about, you know, his justice and stuff like that, for strength. And Vegeta's like, no, forget that. This is my strength. This is how I get my strength. And I feel like that's going to tie into Jiren's arc here. I'm really, really hoping that they have an arc here where Jiren is saying, all that matters is strength, and I just need to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And then Goku and Vegeta's are like, uh, dude, you know, we understand. We are always striving to get stronger no matter what. But at the same time, we have these families, we have these friends and these loved ones in our lives that add to our strength. So it's actually worth more to keep friends and family and, and other people in your life to help build up your strength, you know? And at the same time, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're weak, it just means that, you know, Goku and Vegeta are stronger than they are. Like, it's a huge theme in Dragon Ball for there always to be somebody stronger. Ever since Master Roshi's lessons, there's always somebody above you. So I really hope that they have an arc with Jiren's character here. Now that we actually have a backstory, I do, however, think it's a little bit too little too late for me personally. I kind of wish that they gave us a little bit piece by piece throughout the tournament here, and that way we could get some cool back and forth with, you know, Goku Vegeta's ideologies versus Jiren's ideology of strength is all that matters. And I feel like we would get more payoff with, you know, his character and then, you know, even more, 
some more development for Goku and Vegeta too. So while I do dig the backstory, I do feel like it's somewhat cliche. I think it's cool. It's a little bit dark for Dragon Ball Super. Speaking of, Dragon Ball was pretty dark. Like in the Saiyan Saga, Vegeta and Nappa killed Tien, Chaozu, Yamcha. But the difference is they have Dragon Balls so they can wish their friends back to life. Jiren didn't have Dragon Balls. So it's kind of like, what if the Dragon Ball world or what would the Dragon Ball world be like without Dragon Balls? Well, you have Jiren to exemplify that, sort of. <laughs> so what, what do you guys think of that? Do you agree with what I'm saying? Uh, you know, put your thoughts. If you have anything to add, put them down in the comments. I'd like to hear some other thoughts on this. It's interesting stuff. Uh, but moving on to round three, Jiren's final attack, quote unquote, lament your weakness. And he's about to just wipe out Goku and Vegeta because they're quote unquote weak. And 17, the best team member anybody could ever ask for, jumps in the way with his freaking barrier. 18's yelling at him. Man, it's such like an emotional moment here. And I love how earlier, like Android 17 some says something about, hey, you know, you're pretty human too, or something like that. And it brings it back to this moment where 17 is like, huh, sacrificing myself for others. I kind of like how human that is. Hands down the best line in the entire episode. And completing 17's character here. Like this guy, I feel like he's gonna be the favorite of a lot of people now. Cause this guy's a cyborg, you know? Artificially designed to be a powerful being. And he is exploring his humanity here. So how much better can it get? So I was pretty shocked at what happened. I just could not believe it. I was like, it happened and it's like, did what I think just happen? 17 blows himself up to stop Jiren's attack. That is amazing. During this entire tournament, I was kind of hoping that somebody would sacrifice themselves. Somebody would like die, you know, or something like that in this kind of way. And now we get it with 17. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Except of course the fact that he is leaving his family behind without a boat. So I'm not too worried about it. I mean, we have Dragon Balls. I feel like at some point in time, he's gonna come back, even though the series is ending in a few episodes. So we will have to see. Very awesome stuff. But if anybody was unclear about what happened, they decide to just explain everything that just happened. Thank you, Elder Kai. That's funny stuff. So, uh, yeah, overall, I thought this was an excellent episode. You know, the animation was fine. There were some wonky shots, cool actual animation, an awesome fight, great themes going on here. Although I do wish that Jiren's backstory and themes with that were a little more intertwined in the previous episodes. So now, now we have to like kind of cram it all into these last couple episodes, you know? But episode 128, Kid Boo fight, Redux. As always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. Vegeta looks like a badass in the next episode. I can't wait to see that. If you like what I do here, subscribe to the channel and take it easy.